think one of the smartest things you can do for yourself when you're talking about offense is make it as simple as possible. As simple as possible, right? Because it's got to work for your least smart player, right? Plenty of us have had guys on our team, too, where the, where the least intelligent guy is one of the most athletic ones, right? It happens, right? So if he can't understand your offense, you're in trouble, OK? <coughs> Couple things as we get going. So there's a couple handouts. You guys email me and you didn't get one. We only have like 10 guys here at the first one, so I sort of made copies for for 20. And there's a lot more people here, but that's good to see. Okay. So if you send me an email, I'll get this out to you. It's basically everything that's up there is in the packet, and it's pretty self-explanatory from there. But our, our, my base offense, the offense that I like to teach, and I shouldn't even say my, because it's not mine. I didn't invent it. Right? They've been doing it for 70 years. Okay. What I'm here to tell you, though, is that it works at a high level. It works. Oops. We're going backwards. There we go. Motion principles. There we go. So, all right, who in here counts from up top? Who here counts from behind? Up top? Yes. From behind? No, we're out in this case. All right. So that's why we're going to draw it up, just so there's no confusion. OK? That's a crease. There's an attacking. There's an attacking. There's an attack room. Maybe we usually bury, have the guy that's covered by this hole buried to start out. Right? There's some good things you can do by pulling him out also, though. Okay? So I used to count from up top, so this would be a 2 3 1, right? But now I count from the bottom, so it's a 1 3 2. 1 3 2 motion. It's Phil Jackson's offense, essentially, for lacrosse. Triangle offense. Who here has heard of that before? Everybody, right? Because it's the first thing you should learn. And the last thing. Everything else in between? Just us thinking we're football coaches and get way too creative. Okay? So the triangle motion offense, whatever you want to call it. We just yell motion. My hand signals for that is this, right? Motion. Okay? Every little piece that we change after that, we just add a word to motion. Okay? And most of the time that extra word just has to do with what the midfielder is doing. That's where a lot of the variation comes from at first for us, is in the midfield triangle. So if you take a look up here, just to start, these are some basic principles. I've got three things in my hands now. But I think it's good to have a language to talk to your players with, okay? So if you look up here, one spot, two spot, half spot to the wings, three, four, five across the top, six spots to crease. So now we can talk about, like, okay, I dodge from the four spot. This is what we're looking for there. I need you to get to the five spot here, right? I also talk, obviously, X behind. Okay, but I also talk about X up top a lot, right? One of the things when I was playing at Hopkins that was fairly new then, or at least it was a hot, trendy thing to do, started to become, was to keep the ball in front of the cage and throw back a lot, right? Because if you throw back, whoever catches the ball is in front of the cage and they can still shoot, right? It's quicker, usually, to get the ball on the back side if you keep it in front of the goal, right? That being said, we still play through X plenty here because there's reasons to do that. Um, <coughs> You have your attack triangle, A1, A2, A3. Any, any of the three guys can be in any of the spots, okay? Down here, the midfield triangle, same thing. Any of the three guys can be in any of the three spots. These asterisks here, 10 and a hash, 10 and a hash, the island, five and five, and the opposite island, okay? I actually like the, the island to be a little bit higher than five and five too, maybe like seven yards high and five yards wide. So if you're gonna try to do those question marks and shoot from the island, you need to get higher than five yards and still have some Right. <coughs> Up top here, you see like the hash marks. That's the football hash marks. Best thing I think on a field as far as marking. Right. We add some extra lines that are tightest to the crease that we call tangents to, which give us our midfielders like an actual alley that they're doing things with. Okay. Now one thing about this whole thing, right? This this over here. That's the set as you draw it up, right? But they don't really always stand right in those places. This isn't football. They don't start standing still. You have to move the entire time, right? All these guys have to move a great deal to move the ball. The ball's here. At our level, we're not going to start dodging from inside the box standing right there, right? We need to get the ball around the horn and we need to wind it up, so to speak, right? I call that climbing the ladder, right? And that's just an anticipation thing. So if this guy, if, if they're going to allow us to dodge down the alley for our strong hand, we're going to spin the ball in a fashion, right, where we work. These are all V cuts in and out to get the ball, obviously. But he's going to end up winding way up here so that he can get a good north-south run at people to start off. Right? Because the, the first part of any offense, and they'll say it up there, you got to dodge to score. Right? You have to. The dodge has to be legitimate. If the defense reacts 
to it, people, pieces start moving around, that's where the mistakes are made. Okay? I'm not going to read straight down this thing. That's why I handed it out to you guys. But we'll just cover some of the highlights. So we, we move, right? Our, our rules are simple, too. We're not always in this 1-3-2. The reason I like this triangle motion offense is because it's a 1-3-2, which is a great set to do some set plays out of as far as mumbos or cross screens, right? But there's also elements of a 2-2-2 offense in it. And at times, as soon as we get one dodge and one pop off the crease, we're in an umbrella for a 2 one, 3 which I used to call 3-1-2 from the top, right? Everybody's seen the umbrella offense with all the movies up high. As soon as we dodge and fade off the crease, that's where we are, right? And if the ball goes behind, we have a two-man game that takes place kind of between the midi and the attacking that it's an element of a 2-2-2 offense. So it's not just one thing, right? A motion offense is everything all at the same time. And there's, you're not necessarily going to be in predictable places all the time. That's the way I like to teach it. Our rules are so simple, you might look at me right now and be like, why don't I work for Michigan? This is simple. Like, this is so simple. Right? These are the rules. Somebody's dodging at you, you get through to the crease. Okay? You're on the crease and the dodge takes place, you fade and you pop away from it. That's it. That is it. Literally, that's it. Right? Groundbreaking, right? It works. Right? The whole idea of being split the field in half, right? Ball side, weak side, or back side, whatever you want to call it. Offense, in my opinion, is drawing a double team on the ball side, getting the ball to the weak side as quickly as possible. If you're great at it, you'll have a shot over on the weak side. Someone will screw up, someone will be open, you'll be able to shoot the ball. Right? With defenses that play at a high level, the first time through is not necessarily going to beat the defense unless you're giving them a look they've really never seen before and they've played around, right? So offense just becomes, every time the ball switches, you switch, obviously. Draw a double team here, get it here. Draw a double team here, get it here. Draw a double team here, get it here. Back and forth, right? And if we can do that quickly, we're going to have a lot of success on offense. Much easier said than done, right? These rules are simple. But it's easier to set and done because athleticism plays a huge role in it, and stick work will absolutely trump everything you do. Right? You have to play it to your level of stick work. If you have great sticks and stick work doesn't break down before the defense, you're going to get a great opportunity. Right? But if the stick work breaks down from defensive pressure or just exchanges on the perimeter, then it's a whole other story. Right? So stick work, fundamental at its core, is the most important thing you can do to develop offense. I have a little saying, the three works, right? Stick work, footwork, hard work. It's pretty much all it takes to be a good lacrosse player. Great stick, right? The guys that were here last time, like, made jokes about myself, I always do. I'm not a great athlete by any means, but I have a great stick. I know where to be, and that got me pretty far, right? So stick work's the one thing you can always work on, too. There's nothing keeping any kid out there from having a great stick, right? It's not magic. He's not going to instantly say, I want to have a great stick, and he's going to wake up tomorrow and he's going to have a great stick, right? You have to pound the wall, right? You have to shoot a lot. I get that question all the time. How did you become such a great shooter? I've shot a million lacrosse balls in my life. That's pretty much how, right? I broke up some windows, right? I pounded the paint off my parents' house plenty, but it's because you just get the reps. You have to geek out on lacrosse at some point, and you have to geek out on the stick with the Okay, does that make sense? So, if we start to move into some of this basic motion stuff, like I said, we're not gonna read through all the principles, <clears throat> but the first look that I like to teach these guys, okay? And it's the two-man game aspect that I'm talking about off of this motion. After this guy dodges, here's the mini, that's my little squiggly stick little ball. This is the way we're going to move in our base offense. <coughs> we fade the guy off the crease unless we say something else. Okay? So, as this dodge starts to take place, we've got a clear through and a curl back. We're going to step wide. We're going to pinch first. He'll end up going behind the goal. The ball goes behind the goal. He's going to pinch to the backside pipe. And this guy pops out to this space. This guy follows the X up top. Right? So, very quickly, you see this is that umbrella that I'm talking about. Kind of two guys low, one on the crease, three across the top. Okay? We're going to do circles for a moment. This guy's out of here. He's got to reset. Unfortunately, low tech is the best way to teach this stuff. So bear with me. Okay? We've now moved a little bit for this dodge. We're at the pinch. This attack is cleared through. We've got a mini here, a mini here, and this is the dodger. Okay? There's your sort of uh, two, one, three. Count from the bottom again. No 
matter which direction this guy gives it up, hopefully he's drawn a slide because that's his number one job. Right? First job in possession is to draw a slide. If it goes forward, I call it a pushback. Pushes the ball forward. Okay? If he cracks it back to this median X up top, I call it a pull pass because you pull it across your body. Some people call it a spike, throwback, whatever you want to call it. Right? We work a lot on both throwing it across our bodies and stepping back as we do that. And then if we're under heavy pressure and the guy's diving a pole, maybe we'll teach him to circle and throw back. It takes a little bit more time, but it's safe for most of the time. Okay? So no matter what, either direction, whichever direction this guy throws it. So say he goes here, this guy then steps back and moves it over and starts to push. Here's your, your, your aspect of a, of a 22 offense. These guys will start to move a little bit. The clear through attackman immediately finds the guy who just slid to him, because as soon as he throws it, right, that the guy that slides just slid to stop his dodge, he goes, okay, my job's done. Right? We're gonna try to pick on that. And we're gonna set a screen immediately, and he's gonna cut off of it. And there's your 222 offense. Right? It's only a 222 momentarily. Obviously, because we're going to start to push this, get it back up top, this guy rebalances out, and then we're very briefly in our 1 3 2 again until we die again. Right? But that's the first look. It took us two and a half, maybe three weeks to get it this fall. Because, like, the dodger, more times than not, does the same exact thing that the defense does. He dodges, he draws a slide, he throws it somewhere, and then he goes, <sighs> My job's done. If you, th the best time to be an off ball player is right when you give the ball up. Right, because everybody has that. They can't even help themselves. They, they relax for a second. So if he can get it in his head, all right, I don't have to necessarily do that much. I don't have to make a world beater play here. I just need to draw a slide and move it and then get ready for this cut. I'll probably be open. Right? The day we did it in practice this fall, it was like an epiphany and like the next four possessions, everybody did it. Like, yeah, look at me. You know? And that's easy. Right? So that's the first look that we look for. I might screw this up, so I'm gonna walk over here and hit the space bar. This is going to be an example of that look. This was probably actually the second time we got it. See the dodge? We're going to spin it here. This is a little bit of a longer clip. Uh, you see guys moving in their spots. The guy up top there climbing the ladder, Mikey Slaughter, remember that name? Dodge is hard, gets a good slide, moves the ball forward. Not even a great exchange here. We throw it one extra time, he cuts through. That's hard, right? It's pretty simple. So again, that's our first base look. That's like the principle of this offense. We go from a 1-3-2, have a little bit of a two-man game, right? Because we're briefly in a 2-1-3, and then all of a sudden we're back in our base setting. Okay? Now, like I was just saying, a lot of the variations that we do start to, to be from the midfield. This is a slide essentially exhibiting that fade action, right? The two dotted lines are the two options you have on the pass. Push pass forward. Right? And the pull pass back. That's your fade. That's what we're talking about when we say fade. The guy on the crease is fading to the backside of Okay? The first variation that we look for <coughs> off of this becomes a pop, which is pretty simple. Okay? But I've got the next clip here. There's a couple. Bear with me. This is old film. Right? We didn't get any of these perfect from Michigan yet. We've only had three competitions. So this is Drexel from a couple years ago. Um, but this is going to be a motion fade. And most teams, most defenses, this isn't a knock on all of them by any means, but most defenses are going to play this better, and it's going to be a little harder to do this than just this. Okay, no, I need to use this button. There's going to be two clips here. The first one, the fade guy's going to be wide open. He's going to bury the ball, right? There's throw back, step in, right in the ring, 10 yards. Pretty easy. Next clip here, they play it a little bit better, okay? It's the same exact thing. They get there but then they're not ready to support the next dodge, right? And again, that's that concept of draw the whole team on this side, get it to the back side, dodge again if you're not wide open right off the bat. Does that make sense? We'll let it riff here one more time so everybody can see it. This pinch here is huge because it occupies this guy. That's who should be getting there at times if they rotate fully, right? Their confusion up top is where they're helping from as far as the two. But this is, these are literally back-to-back -back possessions, too. This is the next step of it. Now, it's easy for me to sit up here and say this, right? The guy who buries the first one is the number one pick in the NLL draft. I've got some pretty good guys to work with, right? Same thing is true in Michigan. The second guy, right, has the most wicked crossover split you could ever imagine type of thing. So, right, there, there's a 
development that needs to take place here with the Dodgers, right? But that's why I'm lucky. That's why I coach college across because they're all pretty here so far, right? So I've got something good to work with. You guys got to do the hard work so that I get good guys to work with. So keep it up, okay? Next thing here, here's your first variation, right? The pop. Instead of fading this MIDI out the back side, he's going to pop out the top, and the MIDI that would have stepped into the middle just falls down the back side into the same space, right? Into the same space. The idea for me, I'm not necessarily in a game, once we get to the right point, calling either one of these things out specifically. Does that make sense? The idea is that the midfielders, since the attack moves the same way for either one, the midis communicate to each other which one's taking place. And all that has to happen is this guy's dodged, and that's all he's worried about, right? So M1 and M2 have to talk to each other and say, I'm popping, so you drop down the back side, right? Or we're just in normal motion, so I'm gonna fade, you step over, and we're good to go, okay? When teams get really good at this, they can vary it, right, on their own, and that becomes harder to play. Does that make sense? So let's see what we got next here. This is one from Michigan, this is from practice. There's a couple sources of all this film. This is gonna be a really good angle too here, okay? This is after an extended possession where we spin it again. We didn't have anything the first time. And this one isn't exactly perfect. We do pop and we do get a great shot after it, but it's because two guys make great plays because of it, okay? We're gonna get to our shape here. You see the dodge, pop out the top. He was kind of already in that shooting spot. If we could get the ball out of our stick here quicker, we'd be even better off. They get a little adjacent help, and that's your, that's your shooting spot, right? For me, I think it's really important for your attackmen to be able to play as close to the crease and as close to goal line extended as they can, because the closer they are to those spots, the more likely they are to occupy defenders, right? Cover yourself. If you can cover yourself, they can't help off of you for free, okay? You might lose a backup every once in a while, Right? But more times than not, they're going to be in a more dangerous situation, right? They're going to be in a more dangerous position, which helps you way more in the long run. Okay? <clears throat> so that's your motion pop. Next variation of stuff motion X, right? Very simple here. Let me get back on the board for this. So all we've talked about so far is the MIDI's initiating, right? Motion X is something that we do early on or later in a possession. It's kind of like what, what, I, what I want my attackers to do if they get short sticks on them after the defense slides, rotates, and the matchups change. Rather than just throw the planner in. Beautiful. We'll catch it. Pretty good one to start. Yeah, nice. Good work. Pretty good one. Motion X, pretty complex names here I've got, right? Motion with a dodge from X. Like I said, what was the first thing we said? Keep your offense simple. Keep it really, really, really simple. The reason for that, and Coach Ball can attest to this, when I was interviewing for this job, I sort of gave him my whole philosophy. Obviously, we talk a lot about cross. We talk about direction of the program, yada, yada, yada. But my reasoning for having like one offense that you're really good at and it's really simple is it makes the in-game adjustments very simple, right? Depending on how they're going to play something, I know exactly what to do with this offense to combat that, right? I know what to do if they're not going to let us out of the They're going to make us sweep. We got that in. We got this, right? It just makes the, the adjustments very simple. Obviously, we're only talking about man-to-man -man stuff up here tonight. There's only going to be another session that we can get back to that report. But <clears throat> Keep it simple so that your in-game adjustments are simple, right? When we do this, the attacking on the wing needs to pinch a little bit tighter because they're not sure which direction they're going to go at first, right? Otherwise, it is a little bit more of a bunch where these guys are inside the box, right? Just, just probably standing on it, to be honest with you, if that's your offensive box. But it's a pretty simple concept. Again, I mean, if he's going to push to his strong hand, we get a shallow back cut, okay? We get a fill to X. That's the attack triangle moving together, right? We get a little more vertical back cut. When I say back cut, I just mean, imagine I'm this guy's defender, 
okay? And I'm standing up here, that's the goal back there somewhere. Back cuff, meaning back that way, make him open so he can't see the ball. You don't want to cut in front of him where you can see the ball and cover you at the same time. Make him turn his head, okay? Because half the time they're going to be looking down that way anyway. You know, if you see, see the defender at the back of his head, that's where you go, okay? So he's going to cut behind his defender. This guy's going to swing over the top, and he's going to pop out that way. Same motion, just a rotation, okay? Pretty simple. Obviously, it would be vice versa if this guy pushed left-handed. <coughs> but that, that's it for the most part. Um, what you're going to see here, and it's funny, my reaction on this one, this is probably one of the first nights that we did six on six this fall. But <coughs> the guy picks the ball up out, off the shot out of the end line. The, the offense immediately knows that we're in it, right? They get to their spots. We move hard. <coughs> I'm screaming after he scores this goal, where you go? Look, everybody's moving off ball. Nobody slides, right? Because everybody's worried about staying with their man who's moving. The best part about this is that the diagonal guy, he ends up pushing left-handed, right? The diagonal guy, the minute that's faded, popped off to the back side, is wide open. He didn't even have to shoot it because it's looked diagonal and bang, it's there. Take a look at this. We'll, we'll see it a couple times here. So shot out of bounds. You see the guys in maze, they're pointing each other to the right spots, right? We push hard. We react. You see the diagonal step-down guy? He's still standing there by himself. I'll reset it and I'll try to pause it. It's difficult in this video format, but okay. Here we go. Now the Dodger obviously makes a great play here, but this is what I'm talking about right here. Everybody see him? Right here, wide open, and he stays that way until the goalie's breaking out of the back. That's the primary look, okay? Because more times than not, they're going <coughs> to go quicker than that. Does that make sense? That's the primary look, though. What's next? Motion sweep. Yep, we talked about the sweeps. Okay, so big game plan defensively. Okay, these guys are good alley dodgers. Let's not let them dodge their strong hand in the alley. Okay, so we got to sweep now. All it really adds in for us is one extra step. The minis have to move twice instead of once. That's it. Okay? And we combat this two different ways, depending on where they're going to slide from or if they're going to slide quick to the sweep. Okay? Again, our basic shape. They're no longer going to let this guy go down that alley, right? He's a righty. They're going to force him left-handed. All I mean by we got to, the attack does the same exact thing. The attack is going to move as if this is a left-handed alley down. Okay? The midis just have to go through an extra step of movement. And what that is, I talk a lot in all the breakdown of this stuff, is that if we're setting up sweeps, I don't want the ball to rotate into this guy from this midi. This midi has to have time to get out of the way, right? Because if he throws and then he has to get out of the way, they just heads off, they switch, and I call it bottling it up. Because you've allowed the defense to bottle up the offense right there. They just play sides and boom, you're stuck. You gotta get into something else. If you spin the ball the opposite way, so it's always an attacking on the wing, throwing it up to the midi, it's gonna sweep. This guy and this guy have plenty of time to get out of the way, so they can't just slide quickly and, and bottle it up, okay? So on this pass up here, this guy's going to start working his way out. This guy's going to work his way in. Okay. Now we start sweeping. They're already gone. Okay. And the attack starts to move like it's a regular left-handed alley dodge. Okay. Does that make sense? Now the other thing we like to do out of this, and be honest, be, to be honest with you, I use this term a lot. I call it organic offense. Let the kids figure it out. Put them in, in decent places. Tell them to move, give them simple rules, and they'll figure out ways to, to attack them, okay? We call it like three stack or bunch. We're gonna sweep, lots of times what will happen, instead of moving early from this guy, when this guy gets the ball, this mini's just gonna come down top center. He's gonna carry it to the middle as much as he can. So we've got one, two, three in a stack. And then it's very simple for us, for him to just dodge, fade, and that guy's already in the spot he needs to be in, and we're playing our offense like we normally do. Right? So, oh, oh dear, they're forcing us to our off hand on the sweep. It just turns into a lefty alley, power power dodge. And again, I'm lucky coaching a lot of really good players, really good midfielders that are two handed. So, our success depends on us being pretty good with our off hand, especially at the midfield. Maybe less so at the attack, right? But especially at the midfield. 
Because if that sort of defensive game plan, just forcing you to your offhand, is going to jam you up, then I'd be out of a job a long time ago. Right? So you've got to develop offhand midfielders, especially at this level. And like I said, you guys have a lot to do with that. You can hammer that home right? before you ever get there. That makes a big difference for me. Okay, so a little motion sweep. This, this clip here is going to be a lot more like that three stack type situation or the bunch. <clears throat> and again, this is after a really, really long possession. Okay? And what ends up happening here is they give something up that they would usually cover easily at the beginning of a possession. You see the three stack? Everybody's tight, and they miss the little curl through. Okay? So we'll reload <coughs> this real quick. I'll try to pause it. Long possession. We talk a lot, too, about expanding and contracting. Okay? If we've played offense and we haven't gotten what we wanted and everything's tight to the cage at that point, it doesn't make sense to try to force your way through a brick wall. Right? We need, we need to then spin the ball and let the whole thing expand back out again and get the defense stretched out again before we attack. This is a great example of, of possession doing that. Okay? Like I said, this is probably at the end of like a, a minute and a half. We've already been playing offense. So this is like the fourth or fifth dodge. We do a good job of stretching them back out. Sorry. We stretch them back out. We move it over. We get to our bunch or our three stack. We start to compress again because we're not sure which way he's going to go. And like I said, they missed the curl through. Again, Coach Brochard will attest. They cover that nine times out of ten if it's the first dodge of the possession. But the longer the possession goes, the more likely there's going to be a defensive mistake. It's just the way, the way it is. What you got to make sure as an offensive coach is that your stick work and your scheme doesn't break down before the defense breaks down. Right? That's the, that's the, the game in a nutshell. Who's dictating to who? Right? Who's going who's to blink first? Right? And stick work's the biggest part of that for the offense. <clears throat> All right, at the outset, we talked a little bit about the great opportunity for some set plays out of this basic shape, right? The one, three, two. <clears throat> Again, I have super complicated names for these. We're at 132, so the first one's called 131. As complex as I get, is I get real sneaky and I call it five. All we're doing is adding one plus three plus one, five. So if a team we play a lot, they hear me screaming 131, their defensive coach starts yelling, watch out for the mumbo, watch out for the mumbo. So I just yell five instead. All of a sudden it's fun too, right? No, it's the same thing. <coughs> Anybody, side note here, where did the name Mumbo come from? You guys all know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about, but nobody knows where it came from, right? Like I said, just a, a side note. I don't get it. I, I don't know where it came from either. It's just always been called that, right? So our, our Mumbo plays, our cross screens, they're all dependent. Where the dodge comes from is all going to depend on what hand that player is in. Okay? And out of a timeout, this might not always be a midi. This could be an attacking. If we got someone we want to do this with, we'll change the spots around a little bit, right? But what is this guy's hand, okay? <clears throat> we're gonna do it just like the video here. So we're gonna pretend this guy's a left-handed player. Okay, we're just gonna do a little Elliot thing. Which means we're gonna dodge from here, okay? There's your off guy. There's your midi with the ball. The best part about this stuff when you're always playing that motion is it's a great mix-up, right? So is kind of the box hybrid offense. If you're always playing the motion that we play, it's a great mix-up, it's a great change of pace to protect people out there, okay? So it all starts the same, it's an alley dodge, right, from the midfield after he's climbed the ladder. If he draws a slide here, this stuff is really, really tough to cover. Anybody know the best defense for Mumbos? Don't slide. Because we're trying to run a play, right? If you don't slide, usually it's a tough play. So I'll end up shooting from 13 and I'll yell and pull my hair out when I was blasting this thing. So here's your Mumbo screen. situations where I'll teach these guys to scrape back off of it, almost like step back off the mumbo, and then we'll kick it to actually get something on the back side to do that. So again, if they can get, get off of it and curl up to the, to the top side for their own shot and increased angle as far as the passing angle to the back side, great, right? <clears throat> the other thing the step off to the back does is he goes that way and allows this slip to happen for this attack. You get a better angle to see. Does that make sense? So first things first though, 
come off this mumbo, this guy's job is to draw a slide and throw it here as soon as he sees the fly. This guy handles it, his first look is to the back side here. While this is taking place, your ex attacker needs to get to what I call the pinch spot, so that hopefully his defender can't help with the mumbo. Anytime you're defending mumbos and you need to slide, which if, I'm trying to think who's dodging in this one, which when Mikey Slosser's dodging right handed, you need to slide, right? So anytime you need to slide here, you've got to get a defender from the back side over to help on this stuff and you can cover it up, okay? So that's why he comes to the pinch. Again, after we throw to the mumbo guy, who's now curling up the field with the ball, he's looking diagonal. And if we did our job, there's a three on two on the back side and we've got them rotating and we're all stepping up to it. One more is right to the pipe, okay? The clip that I found of this, again, this is all new stuff, so I don't have as much video of Michigan guys doing it as I'd like. But the clip I found of this, it's an amazing pass, and we don't even need the one more. It ends up with a 10 and a half shot on the back side. Okay? So again, all precedented off of the Dodger drawing a slide the first time. This is from a fall scrimmage this, uh, this, this fall. So again, if you look, we're, we're three yards from the midfield line there, right? That's climbing the ladder. That's winding it up. Right? You get a superior athlete with, with, with great north-south ability dodging from up there, the defense is going to react. Get a little bit of a cross screen, hit the mumbo, diagonal, step down. Right? What makes this play is actually not even the mumbo guy or the dodger. Can you guys see my cursor? Yes. Okay, so it's the guy setting the screen here. Right? His slip after he sets the screen is what makes the play here. Watch what happens. So he slips, and this defender corrects to it, right? He goes to cover it up, and that's what opens up that skip lane. Sorry? We'll reload here. Back. His slip inside. Defender checks to it and then can't get back. Right? And the two guys down low do a great job just because they know how open that top guy is. And they kind of like step back and lower to occupy those guys and it creates a 10 yard shot. At our level, a 10 yard shot's a layup. Has to be. We, how many of those did we take tonight? In the last three weeks? Hundreds. Right? At, at the Division One level, a 10 yard shot with your hands free is a layup. You better be good at that, right? Because it's, it's too hard to get total dunks. Right? I, can, I can create plenty of 10 yard step downs in a game, right? I, I can't guarantee you I'm going to create 10 one on one situations with the goal. But we can create 10 to 15 10 yard step downs in a game. So if you're great at those, you're in good shape. Okay? <clears throat> this next one, you're going to have to bear with me. Some of the film stuff like wasn't quite compatible. But <clears throat> the next step of this 131 or this mumbo play. It's just what we call 132. So the same type of thing, the only difference being it's a sweep to set it up, okay? And we'd have to use this against one of those defensive game plans, again, that says we weren't going to be allowed to have the out, so we have to set it up with a sweep. Again, I'm trying to think which, which way the film one that I have here worked out. I think this guy's already in the film, okay? So they're going to make us sweep to get to where we want to, which just means this guy's going to sweep. Everything else works exactly the same. This guy's just going to shallow cut under and fill back to the back side. That's your mumbo and your curl, getting to the pinch set spot, and then curling up the field a little bit. In the film here, this is guy's going to get the shot from right there, except for that. Okay? But again, very important in this one, too, just like the sweeps. Ball's got to rotate that way into him so that this guy can get through the crease and out the back side without his defender heading off to help. Okay, so the direction of the ball rotation is very important. Um, again, simple names. 131, my guys know it's a ball side. Tally dodge. 132, they know it's a sweep to get there. Okay, very simple. I got to X out of this momentarily. Is this film looking bad correctly? <laughs> but we got it for you. Let's see here. All right, 132 versus PSU. Full screen. There we go. Let us see it. 
So the Dodger already has the ball, right? Number 21 here is the guy that's going to cash in on the end. Here's your guy setting the mumbo screen. This is the guy curling off of it, OK? He has time to get through underneath. They sweep. They hedge off of it. You throw that diagonal first, and that's like a 12-yard step down. All right, again, we'll go back, watch it again. Come on. There we go. Bear with me. Just that thing I was talking about, this defender from PSU here hedges off of this to be the help, okay, which is actually a pretty good idea. He just hedges a little too far and they don't get back in time. If they'd have played this mumbo better, we wouldn't have even been able to throw it there and they would have been successful. But they get it off, it results in like a 12 yard step down from a guy who can shoot from there easily, right? And it's just a little bit of ball movement, a little misdirection, you get the ball to the back side of somebody's hands for it. Again, it's simple offense, right? Simple offense. Let's see what's next here. One thirty-two. Just skipped it. Good. Last. This is this is all we have in at this point at Michigan. Okay. We'll, we'll get a little more in depth, but to be honest with you, not that much more. But fourteen short is my invert. Yeah, shouldn't say mine. I didn't invent it. Just use it. Okay. Anyway, you go to offense coach. Let's see what happens. Seriously, just steal stuff from other people and try to do it better. The talented people in this room are the defensive coaches. Straight up. They're smarter, they got a game plan, they have to worry about all this stuff. We just try to run by people and handle the ball. It's pretty simple. So, 14 short, again, super complicated game, right? We're going to get in a 1 4 1 and we're going to dodge against the short stack from behind. 14 short. Right? If I'm calling this out in the game, it'll be 14 short and one of my guys numbers. Okay? So, 14 short, 5. Okay, 14 short, 22. So they know who it is and how they're going to get to it. Okay? Most of the time it's a mini. Sometimes at, at the end of the it's totally going to attack them. Okay? The film that you're going to see is going to attack them. Um, who's already, you've already been playing some offense. You've got a short stick out of some sort of a rotation and a personnel change. <clears throat> and we get our guys to the spot pretty quickly. The one thing I like to teach everybody with this too is it's so much more important getting guys to the spots than who's in them. Right? Because it's all about the shape here. In an ideal world, this is our right-handed finishing attackman on the wing. This is our left-handed finishing attackman on, our, on the wing. This is the attackman that's left over. That's your roll-off guy. Okay? This spot here, I call the crash spot. This is like 15 yards, easily, like 15 yards high slot. Okay? And then this is the step-down guy who's probably got his back foot at the top of the box. Now here's the other thing to think about. Getting guys to the spots is more important than who's in them, right? So maybe this mini, or maybe this is our left-handed attacker. You got a short stick. You got to get somebody to the lefty spot, even if he's right-handed. The only adjustment I make is if this guy's right-handed, he just plays a little bit higher and tighter so he can step down to that shot. Right? Pretty simple adjustment. Again, keep the offense simple. The adjustments are easy. So the only rule with the dodge here. It's got to be one hard move and go, because there's people moving off ball that need to know which way you're going to go. Right? So you can't dance back and forth back there. That gets us all messed up from time to time. Right? The term we kind of use with this, too, is we're going to flush the middle of the field. Okay? So when this guy goes and dodges hard, he rolls off, he flushes down or crashes. And what that creates, most of the time, is a pretty simple read. I mean, obviously, if this guy's beating his guy and nobody slides, he's going to come around and dunk him. Okay, but most defenses, they're going to get something going here. A lot of teams will go pretty early to this for designated slides, right? We've all seen that. Kind of like the zone up up top. We're going to designate a hot guy. It's going to go pretty early to meet him at GLE. <clears throat> if this works correctly, the read is pretty simple. You're reading the crash guy and the step down guy. Right? Because the guy that's supposed to cover the step down guy has to go with the crash. If he doesn't, go to the crash guy. Pretty simple, right? <clears throat> if he goes with the crash guy, we try to, try to skip it through. And again, creating something like a 12, 13 yard step down shot. So you're going to want one of your better step down shooters up there playing that spot. Okay? Better defenses will throw some sort of a combination look at you here and maybe come down off the wing guy. Okay? And our rule for the dodger here is if the slide gets to your hands before you can read the crash or the skip through, just throw it to the ball side of the wing. Right? And if you just throw it to the ball side wing, what I teach that guy is his first look, 
is the opposite ball side look. Because the defense is rotating at this point to some extent, and we just want to skip it right through their rotation. Okay? <clears throat> sometimes they get a stick on it, sometimes they don't. Um, the director team I've been with for the last few years <sighs> killed Virginia with this for like three years. And then, you know, Mark Cockerman would like pick up something in front and win the game another time for like three years. Right? So, just a bone in my side. But <laughs> it works, and it works against really good teams and really good defensive teams. So the film you're going to see, though, they slide so early that this guy reads it, steps back, throws it back to the guy who's filling behind X for him, and they screw up their recovery up here so that it's just a, a throw back there, a shot, and a goal. Okay, so that's like the that's like the pretty option off all of it. Yeah, just a quick question with that. If he reads the coma there, is he always rolling back to the guy busted rolling off? Do you teach your guys that? Or? Yes, especially if they're going super early. Yeah. And you'll see it here on the film as we crank that up. This slide is so early. He does a great job. It's one hard move. They slide super early. He rolls back before they ever get to his hands. And basically, it was probably an offensive midi up top who was stuck in on defense. Gets lazy with the rotation. He says, no, no, you go over there. They never get there, right? And it creates a pretty simple opportunity for us. So again, the best part about this one too, another point with teaching this, you gotta get the guys to the spots before you start to dodge, but you don't wanna, like you literally wanna dodge as soon as they're anywhere near those spots. So right here, you can see, see on the film, it looks like a little bit of a jumbled mess, right? What I can tell you, here's your guy with the short stick. This is the guy that's gonna be the righty step down over here. Here's your roll off, crash, step down on top, and this guy is getting to the lefty wing late. This is our left-handed attackman, okay? And I'm pretty sure this happened to be a left-handed midi too, who just knew he needed to get there. We start to dodge just as he's getting there. They slide incredibly early. We roll back in time, right? Redirect it through X. And like I said, a short stick up top took the easy route out and he sent the pole all the way through, which you don't want to do. You want to bump through the crease and get somebody out there quickly, obviously. And as a result, it's a pretty simple look on the backside. Okay? Pretty simple. And again, what makes the play, though, <coughs> is the guy's recognizing the slide early. It's one hard move he goes. They react, which on most inverts, most teams are going to react pretty quickly. And the stick work from that point on is great. Right? The biggest thing I talk about with my offense all the time, too, is the best skill you can possibly have for us is be the guy that can draw a slide, draw a double team, right, and get that ball out while the double's still on him. You say, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Two to the ball, right? You can get two people stuck on the ball and then the ball's gone, but well, we got an advantage somewhere else, right? And all you should ever be thinking about with offensive stuff is finding that three on two or four on three on the backside, right? And then, as much as you can simplify that equation, okay, which is, again, it's that concept of cover yourself, right? We got a three on two on the backside, cover yourself so that someone's open. Does that make sense? It's kind of counterintuitive, but you've got to be somewhere dangerous so that the defense has to account for you, and then you can pick apart that three on two, four on three. If you can make a four on three on the backside, a three on two, great. If you can, from the three on two, make a two on one, great. And then if, if they rotate out the field, which a lot of this stuff is designed to do, and you step up from X, and we dump it down to you, the one more pass, then all of a sudden you're one on zero with the goalie, and we like our chances there. Does that make sense? I told you I have a pretty simple approach to offense, okay? But I don't see why anybody else makes it any more complicated, right? You'd be surprised what would happen if you just give, give talented players simple rules and be like, go and press them, right? Because we've all been there, we've all been in that situation where they do something you didn't want them to do, and you go, no, not yes! It happens like once a game, right? Right, come on, right, everybody? Like once a game, like you have to be willing to let them do that, okay? If you put too many handcuffs on stuff, and you make your offense too complicated, you gotta be here at this time, you gotta be there at this time, you gotta be here at this time, you know, you gotta make this read, you gotta make this read, you gotta make that read, they're just gonna forget it, right? And you're gonna get frustrated that they don't understand. And you're not going to be successful. Now, the last caveat to all this stuff, okay? This is the offensive stuff I like to run, okay? If it doesn't work, I'll do sometimes, right? 
I'm not going to like hammer them in. You, you can't you can't put the square peg in the round hole, right? So it's not going to work for us. The idea is to win the games. So if it's not working, do something else, right? Because you want to win the game. Obviously, I mean, give yourself a quarter, give yourself a half, right? I, I give it like a quarter. To be honest, if we're not getting what we want, what we want in the first quarter, we're making a couple adjustments, figuring out how they're playing us. Well, then we're going to start doing some other stuff. Most likely for me, we'll start inverting a lot more. Does that make sense? Everybody with me so far? That's pretty much it, to be honest with you. Like I said, that's all we have in right now. That's all we needed this fall. You know, we put up some goals and played against some good teams. I think everybody's happy with the results. Everything's trending in the right direction. So, again, keep it simple, stupid. Kiss method, number one. Questions? Anybody? Jokes? Nothing? I'll ask one thing. Um, you know, so much of like the motion offense, at least personally, um, is predicated on playing games with the two and then getting to the backside. And then when teams start going adjacent or going early adjacent, what are some of the reads you teach your guys? Because, you know, they get in the motion, they just put their head down, all I clear through, wait, your guy's going. Especially I love those are your those are your college guys, high school guys coming yeah. from Texas K that are really good school. You know, what are some of the things you teach them? To be perfectly honest yeah. with you, yeah. if a team wants to slide adjacent, they're helping you out. In my opinion, they're helping you out, right? There's a couple teams in Division One who like slide almost all adjacent, and it's the best week of, of, of my life as an offensive coordinator. You know all the movement we have to do to play against free slides and all that stuff. Believe it or not, you don't have to move when they start sliding adjacent. So if I'm going to play a team that wants to slide adjacent to pretty much everything, well, we're basically going to sit in the shape that's like a pinch three three or that two one or two three one from count from the back. If I've lost you, we'll draw it up so we know what we're talking about. But I would honestly, against teams that slide adjacent, play like this, like a three high offense, where we're still going to dodge the alleys. Think about this defensively with me. You got D, you got D, you got D. There's D midi most likely. I put the Alex down here in the middle, and it's D midi, right? <clears throat> so you always want to kick it down off this first adjacent slide. You got to dodge hard enough, and this is the stick work part that could be tougher for you at the high school level, right? You have to have good stick work in tight areas. And it's the type of idea where you got to be able to pass the ball right over the sliding defender's head, essentially, like Greg Paxton. But if they're going to slide adjacent to this, excuse me, get the blue one going. If they're going to slide adjacent here and come across, well, then I always want them to dump this down first and then look diagonal past the guy that should be rotating down for them. Right? So we're going to dump here and then look that way, if that makes sense. The... If this stuff, we're not getting what we need done out of that set, which most of the time, if you have the sticks to do it, you can. <clears throat> Another great option against adjacent stuff, and a lot of coaches, you'll see them do it. If we want to force someone to slide adjacent first, we'll get one of those big circle overloads type of things. And we'll give the whole side to, to a, one of our middies to dodge like straight towards the pipe so they have to slide adjacent from the next guy. Obviously, it's not a circle for very long. Most of the time, you're cutting into like some sort of a 2-2 right after that, which is what you want to do. If you can get in a big circle, make them slide adjacent, and then cut through that rotation, you start to find some stuff pretty easily. I call this, and this might confuse people, let's just call it motion adjacent pop, okay? It's a double pop, or motion double pop. But what we're going to do, we're going to get in that one three two set, okay? We're not going to rotate at all, though. So these attackmen are going to play way more goal line extended and more tight to the cage than normal, okay? But then otherwise, the set is exactly the same, right? Here's your dodger. We're assuming if they're slide adjacent, this is the hot guy if I dodge the alley, right? <clears throat> All we do in this double pop situation is as he dodges, okay, this guy's going to fall down the backside, he's going to pop out top there, and he's going to front swing right to the middle, okay? Because this guy's defender who's standing in front of the cage needs to be the two over that attack and after they slide adjacent off of him. More times than not, this guy's defender on the back side is going to have no idea what he's doing when he front swings through there. And if you do it right, he's wide open right off the bat. Okay? Sometimes you can throw it straight in from the mini to that guy. This guy's gone already. He's up here. Okay? Uh, when I draw it up, usually and teach it to him, I prefer him to kick it there and then look inside. Because it's just a better angle to see it. It's 
worked for me. We made it up kind of on the spot in a game once, and it, it worked great. Again, the idea just being, you're going to try to cut. They're, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna rotate around the perimeter. That's what adjacent slides are, right? You want to, somewhere on the back side or behind the goal, cut through that rotation so that the next guy in the rotation doesn't stick with them, right? And if they do come to this, well, this guy would step back and kick it behind the cage, and this guy would probably be stepping down. I put a lefty there probably so that he could end up stepping down and catching the ball on the outside and again hopefully creating some sort of like a 10 yard step down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anybody else? Green? Uh, in terms of, I guess, balancing player development while also trying to teach this, how much, I guess, do you even like, incorporate you know, the motion into your shooting drills or do you do like smaller versions of this? Absolutely. Right? We break out the midfielders. In, in live drills, we'll do three on threes with just the midfield triangle against the defense. We'll do three on threes with just the attack triangle. <coughs> in a situation where we'll tell them it's three on three, but you can't set picks for each other at all. All you can do is rotate off each other. Okay, and the defense has to help then too, and the reads become you know pretty simple. That's it. That's the kind of the concept when we do that drill with the attackmen. We're preaching island X stuff. Okay, we want to get to the island, draw a slide, kick it to X, and then find another guy. And that's basically the whole premise of the 2 2 2 offense. Island X, Island X, back and forth. We get to that in our motion, too. Once the attack touches the ball and they dodge, I always want the attack to dodge, draw a double, kick it back behind the goal, and go out the back side. Because that's when stuff gets pretty simple. Right? And then as far as, as far as shooting drills, absolutely. Any shooting drills you do, unless it's just for reps and volume of step down, make your shooting drill also like a three or four man passing drill that's a part of your offense. Absolutely. Especially when you start talking about mumbos and coming off of mumbo screens to shoot the ball. Like that can be a little awkward if you've never done it before, so it's a great thing to rep, 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 rep. Right? Absolutely. Make your shooting drills from your offense. I joke with my guys all the time, kind of like a little bit myself, but on purpose. It's like I just make it up as I go along, guys. Did you like that one? Good. You know? But that's the shooting drills should absolutely just come right from the offensive concept you're trying to work on. Totally. Anybody else? You guys locked off five on five to do you put on a tree or force the slide to make or do you debate? Well you could you could force them adjacent. Yeah, you could use them as a pick. Right, you could use them as a double pick. Absolutely. <laughs> um, for me at our level, depending on who it is, are they gonna shut them off with a pole? Like if they want to have a sick player, are they gonna waste a pole to shut them off? If they are, mm -hmm. and we're playing now against three poles and two shorties, I might just say, take the afternoon off, buddy, we'll play five on five. I know it's a little tougher for you guys because probably your best player and the most capable one. Um, but I would use them as a team pick, absolutely. You know? Use them as picks and put them, put them on the trees, make them slide adjacent. Teach him how he can hurt the backside rotation by getting in its way. That's, like, that's the biggest thing you can do with man off, man off shut off. Absolutely. Anybody else? Drills on drills on drills, that's what's next. That's right. Thanks for listening.